So in the previous activity, we went over an unregulated power supply. And what we did was effectively choose a transformer to go from 120 volts or 110 volts to another voltage level. Right? That was determined by the output voltage that we wanted. In this case, it was at 20 volts. Plus, we accounted for two diode, volt, uh, di diode drops at least, plus the ripple. We can do a little bit more than that, so we decided to go from 120 to 24, or from 110 to, to 24. The analysis is the same. In this case, I did it for 120, so remember that we have to do that is RMS, so we multiply times the square root of 2, divided by 24, it gives us a ratio of 7, so we are being conservative, so we did an 8 to 1 um, transformer. Once we do that, we can select the capacitor. The capacitor, uh, the value depends on how much current you're going to be providing to the load. In this case, we were asked to do 1 milliamp, and what is the ripple? And so the capacitor, effectively, if you know that this is going to be 1 amp, and um, you want a ripple less than 2 volts, you know the time for that ripple, which is approximately one half, a conservative design will be for one half um, the period of the input waveform. And that's because we are doing full wave rectification, the in or twice, therefore we have twice the frequency. So if the input is a 60 hertz, twice that, 120 hertz, or one over 120 gives us eight milliseconds. Is it slightly less than that? I mean, you start charging, if you think about it, you don't go all the way here, you start charging right here. But it doesn't matter, we are doing design, and what we need to do is meet those specs or exceed them, right? And so back of the envelope, you can assume that you have 8 milliseconds, so you have here the 8 milliseconds, 2 volts ripple, 1 amp, and we got the 4 millifarads. Uh, we could choose a bleed resistor to discharge the capacitor if we disconnect the load. We can also think about the fuse that we want. Typically, you will do a fuse close to, if this is a 1-amp supply, it will be a 1-amp um, fuse. For this bleed resistor, you want that this RC network, that you discharge the capacitor if you disconnect the load in a few seconds. And... Effectively, what we had is that we got 120 or 110 at the input, whatever it is, and at the output now we have something that goes from around 22 to 20 volts. Right? And we don't care that much about that because we are going to regulate it. And, um, and that's what we care about, that we have, in this case, we are asked to do a regulated at 10 volts. Now you can use an IC regulator or you can do, you can create your own regulator. I'm going to illustrate here the simplest regulator possible. So, which is to have 10 volts here. Okay. You're applying a serial regulator. To do that, actually let me erase here a little bit. You're going to disconnect the load right here. And what we need to do before connecting the load, we can add a senior regulator circuit. So we're going to have a resistor here to bias the senior. Right? And now we are connecting the load. So this is our step five right here, step five. So what do we do here for the regulator? Well, we need to choose a sinner in parallel with the load of 10 volts if we want to provide a constant 10 volts. So this is our output voltage. We do a sinner with 10 volts. And we need to make sure that we provide some current. You select a sinner, 
that you're providing enough current for it to be in breakdown there, right? So uh, let's go ahead and how we will select this RS. We'll do at one end we have 22 approximately volts, 22 minus 10 divided by the current. I'm going to assume that this is approximately one amp. It will be one amp plus the small current that you need for the thinner to be there. And so if you do something like this, this is going to be 12 ohms, which is a very small resistor value. So that's something to keep into consideration. One of the reasons why we can improve this regulator using either an IC regulator or otherwise we're going to see how with thinners, or pumps and transistors, we can create our own regulators that are better. But effectively, you can go with an unregulated voltage there to go to a 10 volts regulated to a load by just placing a thinner across the load and just making sure that there is enough current to bias both of them. Now, in all reality, you could do this a little bit higher Maybe just choose a 10 ohm. Okay, when you simulate it, you will realize, you will see that this circuit, in, in step by steps, actually, let me just do this here. At this point, We have our 24 volts. If you are doing it, make sure that you don't connect all the elements so you can see, okay. You put the probe there, you get this. Then you rectify it's something like this. Maybe I can do a, an LTSPI simulation. That's what you will see up here, assuming that, that you have everything else disconnected. Then you put your, capac your capacitor here. Okay, something like this. This is our ripple. We need it to be less than two volts. This is how we selected the capacitor. Remember, we were selecting the conservative, assuming that the time was all the way to here. And remember, if this was with a halfway rectifier, we have more time to discharge all the way to there. That's a full way rectifier. The frequency of the output, notice, is twice the frequency of the input or, or this period. T output equals one half T input. And therefore, from here to here, we have a milliseconds. And we have a two volts ripple. So with that, we are able to choose the capacitor for a particular load that we want to provide. So a milliseconds over two volts gives us times one, uh, one for the load gives us the four millifarads, which we could put a couple of them in parallel if we wanted, two millifarads. And once we have that, and this is, we are at 22 volts approximately, or 24 volts. Twenty two to 20 volts. We can use a thinner to provide that constant 10 volts simply because the thinner voltage current we just bias it as long as we have enough thinner current to be at the thinner voltage which in this case is 10 volts large deviations in load current due to whatever, the circuit, the load, are going to give small changes, are going to result in small changes of the cylinder voltage. Thank you.